The street corner soapbox. <laughs> the street corner soapbox with Foul Soul Willing Podcast Takeover. We're making a killing. Music to nightlife. Debauchery and street news. Serving it hot. We are some street news, movies and mayhem. The craziest guests, words from chaos. Get it off our chest, Rhode Island worldwide, dark corners in all places. Speak how we live, radio show, smoking aces. Ladies and gents, for the people we're talking, take the show on the road, right where you're walking. Yeah! Uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Street Corner Soapbox Podcast, coming to you live. That's right, boys and girls. We are back. Street Corner Soapbox. I am here with my brother from another mother, Lord Willen. Yo, 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 yo. What's good? And we are doing our monthly recap. Yes. That's right. If you can get it together. I, I got it. I'm good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking sharp right oh, yeah, now. You're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had, uh, we had three guests on uh, thus far. First three episodes. And uh, we're here to just give you a recap of that and uh, talk some shit. Get some things off the the brain, and um, yeah, man. So how you doing over there? Me? Yeah. I'm how you doing, pal? I'm, I'm all right, but up at five in the morning. Yeah, this guy he sleeps about fucking two hours. He sleeps, he's like a fucking <laughs> I take cat, naps. or I should say, like a ferret. A ferret. I Shout out to the ferret. ferrets. Shout out to Taz Diego, Absolutely. little mama. Uh, but he he sleeps like his pets. Yeah, so pretty much. He, well, they he, sleep he, like me, maybe. Yeah. Well, they, well, they say right that something like the the pets become like the owners, yeah, or they vice mimic. versa. Yeah, right. So get, I think they'll adjust to my schedule, or maybe I'm adjusting. I think you're more on the ferret schedule at this point, right? I think so. I shit yeah. a lot. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, and they definitely shit a lot. So there you go. But um, so yeah, the first episode we had our friend Dirty Randy, Dirty motherfucking Randy. Um, and how would you describe him? Would you describe him as a painter or? Uh, I mean, he's an artist, definitely an artist. He's like a white Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's just although. The although I hope he doesn't cross dress and have plans to marry himself. That would he's be probably fucking strange. Had article of female clothing on at one <laughs> point in his life. He's running around here looking like a unicorn. So yeah, who, who, who he, he's actually the only dude I know that could get away with and the whole rock it unicorn and run thing. it and yeah, own it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Dirty Randy. Randy, Randy uh, is is an eclectic person, but a great person. And um, no, he's the best. Dude. Yeah, absolutely, good motherfucking dude, solid dude, man. And, and Randy will get busy if he has to, man. Don't don't put it past him. You know, don't let the fucking hair fool you. Randy's uh, no, he's a you solid know, kid. Yeah, definitely, absolutely, um, a very talented artist. Once again, follow him on Instagram, the underscore dirty unicorn. Check out his artwork. Um, I know he's getting in. He said on the podcast he's getting into the clothing game, or he's been in it actually, but he's custom kicks. Working on, like right, that. exactly. Even so, if you have a project you want him to do, he is very, very yeah, talented. He can do I mean, custom I've stuff. Had, I've had some of his artwork in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. Over there in the hood over there, we were. Uh, yeah, with the, the chicken coop. The chicken coop. We had a dirty Randy uh, painting and some other things that I will not talk about, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was My that was a good time in life, yeah. <laughs> a very hazy time, but <laughs> nevertheless a lot of fun. But yeah, check out Randy. That was that was fun, man. That was a good way to start it off, I think. Um, and you know, you could kind of get a vibe for what we're doing and talk to somebody who we know pretty well and get a feel for the podcast. So exactly, make sure if you haven't heard it, go listen to that episode and support what Randy's doing. Yeah, just give it a hear. Listen, Absolutely. Um, you know, I know some people, you know, they might not be familiar with him, but that's just, this is kind of what the whole podcast yeah, is about absolutely. is to uh, get premier people, blah, 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 people familiar with local artists, local business owners. Until the cause. until we start interviewing real celebrities. Until I can uh, mediate, <laughs> mediate the debate for uh, Trump and Biden. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Um, until I get a $100 million Spotify. Exactly. Yeah, that's what we're going for. Um, so then our second episode... It was with the one and only JT, Jared JT, Tillenhas. Jared Tillenhas, 17 time Golden Gloves champion. That's, you know, that, Pretty incredible. that says it all right there. It was like fighting since he was like eight years yeah, old. Yeah, I mean. Oh, well, he was fighting. No, it was, he was 15. He was 15 yeah, to 16 fought, year old fighting like a 28 year old. He, he was, was, a, a he was on the brink of turning 16, he said, and he fought a dude that was 28. Yeah, that's okay? crazy. Okay, that's insane. I didn't even know that no, I that was allowed. You know what yeah, I'm saying? It's a crazy commission. That's insane, dude. Like, that's not fair. I mean, you can't be. I, if if I was even if I if I was 19 and I went and beat up a 16 year old, I'd be in big. Trouble. Absolutely. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And then um, he was also an undefeated professional boxer. Yeah. You know, he had a, a good career in the pros. 
Um, and now he owns his own gym, Legendary Boxing, North Providence, Rhode Island, over there in Centerdale. Um, and Smith it's a, Street. Yeah, yeah, Smith Street. Very nice facility, uh, top of the line. Um, and you're going to get top-notch instruction, you know, he, from someone who, who's been in the game, man. Oh, yeah, he's definitely went the distance. He has, and he has a lot more shit coming, too. Yeah, like, You yeah. know, though you see the back back area, even on our picture we took. Yeah, yeah. Back, right outside that wall, that graffiti. Back. I forgot who he said did that, but that piece is dope, man. That piece in the back over there. Um, oh, yeah, it's crazy. That, whoever did that killed it. Yeah, and, um, they, and they're going to have a whole outdoor area, too. Yeah. For, you know, so it's going to, it'll be, it'll it's be. It's nice down there. I think good. they're trying to, I guess they're trying to revitalize the Centerdale over there. They're trying oh, that to. Whole, no, that whole, they have, I mean, it's, I mean, you've seen it. it yeah. it's, it's live over there. There's action. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's always been busy down there, you know, but I guess, I don't Plus know. Plus, it's like the intersect, the two intersections right back and back. Right. One going to what, Mineral Spring, I believe. In Smith Street. You know? Yeah, you got the fucking rotary right there. I hate rotaries, I mean, by the way. There was three Ripta buses back to back. Yeah. No, there's always people down there. That's a good spot to have a business. Um, so if you're in the area and, and you want to get into boxing, that's where I would recommend you go. Yeah. You uh, can follow him on all his, you know, Facebook. yeah. Uh, Jared's on Instagram and Facebook with personal pages, Jared telling has, and then there's legendary boxing pages as well on both platforms. So make sure you give those a follow yeah, support what he's 20, doing. 20, 51, two, zero, five, right. one Smith street, North Providence. Yeah. And he has two, um, Fighters coming up right now that he had talked about one male, one female. Um, maybe we'll get them on the on the yeah, show I think, coming I up. I think uh, I think we're gonna have them come up uh, maybe like a month or two. Yeah, uh, and yeah. see how their progression's going. I know we were saying it's a little harder now, cause, right? Because uh, of COVID. Yeah, you can't really do much besides train. Right, exactly. Which they are doing. They were training there when we were there. Yeah, no, know? there was a clash. Could, that's all the beeping and knocking around. That makes it authentic, though. You know yeah, we're really yeah, in the hitting, fucking hitting, gym, dude. You, you got a class going on. You hit a, the timer ringing in the background, and, and you hear people hitting the pads in the bags. I mean, that's oh, yeah, as real like as it gets. I'd like to do a follow-up with him. I mean, Jared's great. Yeah, man. Shout yeah. out to Jared. Much respect. Um, and make sure you check out Legendary Boxing. And then for our third episode, we had the lovely and talented... Audrey Mello. Oh, so you got to see, you got to say, uh, I did lovely. get to say lovely. Wait, you've been waiting. We that's a long time. Three times. That's a long time friend of yours. <sighs> yeah. Well, um, the best. I've known her for a long time. I'm friends with her brother. We worked together. Yep. Um, and she started the, uh, the gym. She started the tattoo parlor, um, when she was going through, going through the ringer kind of, you yep. know? Yep. And, um, was it Haley, Haley, Jeans, Haley right? Jeans, yep. uh, tattoo In studio. Bristol. That's Bristol, Rhode Island. Very nice, uh, spot. Oh, awesome. Clean, um, Dope artwork, dope decor, uh, just a professional atmosphere. Uh, she had the uh, the picture of Mom Drew we, we talked about. Oh, that's that right. I, yeah. I actually, I gotta get a shot. I actually can find one. And I'll post it. Uh, yeah, a family of artists. Yeah, very talented artist, and she comes from a, a bloodline of artists. And uh, she was very nice to talk to. Very interesting. Very yeah. uh, had good stories. Her yeah, whole story is actually uh, crazy. How she came to be a tattoo artist. Yeah, and they. Uh, yeah, with well, the transition, like literally from like beginning to end to like back to the beginning again. Like she has the. She started kind of being like a nosy little kid in I think hang around tattoo parlor, and right? Then, uh, and then he took her under her wing, and and now he's working. Dean's working for her, right? You know, yeah, that's... And then and then the other the other thing, the pitch of the guy that they used to be pen pals. I haven't heard that word in a long time. Right, I know. Who pen... writes letters? <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I haven't wrote a letter in fucking I don't even know how long. I don't, I don't know. I think the last time I wrote a letter was, was to someone in... I knew in prison. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the last time I wrote a letter, I think. I wrote an envelope. Oh, no, I wrote for maybe a birthday card or something like. Hey, oh man. yeah, but that doesn't constitute yeah, it's a, not letter. a letter. No, no. Um, so yeah, she has a crazy story, man, and she's definitely a success story. She's oh, yeah. book she's solid, un- dude. Unbel- so she's twenty twenty one. She's a phenomenal artist. I know. I got to see if I can get in there and get something, man. Like uh, uh, after hours or something like that when she got time, because she Tattoo definitely a piece of cabal goal on the back. Yeah, of neck. piece of fucking kielbasa. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> now nah, she's definitely a great tattoo artist and uh, good artist in general, and definitely a cool person to talk to and are very supportive of everything of what we're doing and i think just oh, yeah, the local scene in general pushing for for local people yeah, doing man. things and it's that's why our, that's, like that's, that. you know that's why we started doing this anyway especially now with covid where you know a local business might need we're i don't mean, know she doesn't but somebody might need Absolutely. a little push you know what i mean local businesses uh, some have been in dire straits some places aren't going to open back up uh, yeah, and, and even places that have opened, um, a lot of them are not functioning the same as 
if you're uh, yeah, if you're in the bar business oh, or forget it dude like which in, we in are both inter- yeah the in? entertainment business i mean you haven't yeah. been back to work I, no. i've been back operating as a bar and restaurant right not a gentleman's club right. and that's you know i'm not we're not making money off of selling you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> over selling fucking jameson and gingers <laughs> yeah no not so much maybe uh, coronas but yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Mardi Gras Springfield. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that whole business, man, is definitely in, in a tough spot, as are a lot of businesses. But the service industry was hit very hard. Um, so anything that we can do to help the service industry uh, with promotion or anything, if anyone out there has. Yeah, hope, anybody listening. Yeah. If you, I mean, you can email us. It's on the website. You can literally yeah. hit us up anywhere. Most of you that are listening at this point probably have our contacts. Right. And if you know even know somebody that wants to. Um, you know, be exposed a little bit more and vice versa. Um, we're all for it. We'll come out to the shop or whatever you guys are doing and uh, chop it up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. We we want to, uh, you know, network and help people out, help the businesses out, and, you know, one hand wash the other. So, you know, we can we can definitely do business and, and uh, make things happen. And we definitely uh, are out to support the local businesses, the especially in, in that in that field too, because we we come from that and we know how it is. And um, I mean, I talked to the two people that are still like out of work, you know. Yeah, I mean, I haven't fucking worked in and a lot of places six have, months. Have been out. You yeah, know, yeah, man. They stopped giving you that six on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, mean, anyway, shout out Audrey Mello, Haley yes. Jeans Tattoo Studio. That is two o eight Gooding Avenue. That's Bristol, Rhode Island. O two eight nine. O two O nine. Wait. O two eight O nine. There you go. Holy fucking stuttering shit. prick. Man, stuttering prick. Uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> give you the number because she said she don't answer the phone. She's too busy. Well, actually, she said people call there and, and ask for Haley. Haley. Or some dude showed up. Haley, and was looking. Haley. There is no Haley that works there. Yeah. By the way, she she was she she said some dude showed up and was like, "I'm Haley's cousin." <laughs> and he wanted he wanted a discount, <laughs> fucker. And, she, and she's like, in her head, she's like, "Yo, there is no Haley." There is a Haley, but not that works. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that right, exactly. Um, yeah, so, and then she's not, they're on the social media and, too. Yeah. Uh, Audrey Mello and Haley Jean's Tattoo Studio. Haley Jean's Tattoo Studio. So make sure you check that out. Yeah, she's, I mean, it's it's worth the drive. It's worth making an appointment. It's worth it. She's yeah. amazing. She's really, well, she's you're going to have a tough time artist. making an appointment. She said she was booked till 2021. Well, you can get it next year. Yeah, exactly. But then she'll probably be booked through 2021. Next year is 2021. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but there are other good artists. She has that other girl yeah. working underneath her. She's phenomenal, young yep. young kid. Yeah, uh, and she had nothing but nice things to say about her too. So, I mean, and Dean's license number is one in the state. Yeah, right. So he definitely. I mean, well, if fucking, you want some, nostalgic, he's the original. He's the if you OG. Want some nostalgic the, of Ryland tattooing, right? Yeah, hell yeah. So definitely check it out. It's my big sister, Audrey Mello, Haley Jeans Tattoo Studio. Yeah, absolutely. Check it out, and. Um, Support all the people that we're talking about. We, we can't stress that enough. Yeah, share our stuff, follow us, share our comment, stuff. you know, anything. I mean, you don't know what you're going to share that somebody else might appreciate. Absolutely. I and agree. the business owners appreciate it. That's the, you know. Yep. Yes, sir. But anyway. What else is going on in fucker. the world? Yeah, yeah, it's been fucking busy. You calling me and texting me every three minutes. Yeah. You but know, uh, putting that work in. Yeah. Fucking back hurts. Well, that's what you get for jumping off of a fucking 60-foot cliff. Some of you might have heard that on actually the, the episode pod. with Jared that yeah. our friend here decided to jump off a 60-foot cliff yeah. and might Coach have fractured Bermuda's his tailbone. Jay Hyde <laughs> said, oh, yeah, go. It'll be fine. And they did it, or he did it, and then I did it, and I'm not and fine. And re- <laughs> you felt the repercussions of your actions. But I did learn a very valuable lesson. And what was that? Tell the people. Don't jump off a 60-foot cliff. <laughs> learn. <laughs> and, yeah, and that's a little like maybe 50 or don't actually you can jump off it just you got a pencil dive you can't just what, go what's and, what's pencil diving Describe like when that. you um you know what a pencil is like straight i do know jump, what a pencil jumps down i haven't used a pencil in a long time but i know just black pens god forbid you give it another color you freak black out. pen's the only pen <laughs> no. form your body into the shape yeah, like of a pencil. straight gotcha yeah nah, okay. yeah simple 
You never okay. penciled that? I, I don't think you I ever look penciled like that. You're more of a cannonball guy. I, I used the cannonball belly flop. <laughs> Um, belly flop. Belly <laughs> would not, <laughs> not belly flop, dude. You'd break a rib or something. Belly flopping was and my it would, specialty. It would sting. Dude. Oh my god. Yeah, because even. Oh like, yeah, off of sixty feet. It felt feet. like yeah, I got hit in the back with a fucking like a like a fucking baseball or a sledgehammer like right in my ass. I was like, boom. Once I hit, I thought it was gonna be like I was gonna like cascade into the water. And like, no, you hit that hit that shit like a ton of bricks, dude. Fuck thought you that. were a fucking Olympic diver. <laughs> I didn't dive. I thought I was like. Ah, was that yeah. guy's name Greg Luganis? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. That's who's that's Lou Garrix. No, Greg Luganis. I think he was like an Olympic diver or something. Lou Garrix is the disease. I'm no, that's idiot. completely different. He's a base, he was a baseball yeah, player. Yeah, he was a baseball player. That's, that's completely different. Um so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, kids especially, do not go jumping off of sixty foot. There clips. should not be any kids listening to this podcast. <laughs> well nowadays it's twenty twenty and you never fucking know. Oh no, I know. I just went on the boat uh with my mother and um Dan and Diane, we yep. went down to Newport and I and Aubrey um, my buddy Dan's daughter, and she has a fucking cell phone. She's six years old. She oh, knows, dude, and she knows it. more. She knows how to get. She knows more than us. Not yeah. maybe not us, but definitely more than Diane. Love you, Diane. Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen fucking three year olds operate an iPad or a tablet, yeah. like no like, problem with the quickness, kid. Yeah, dude. Like, it's just I don't know. It's a crazy time. Um, there's that whole theory of of them trying to slowly implement technology to the point where we actually become cyborgs. You know, so I don't know if that's what's you taking might be place. A cyborg. I might be. I think you're more of a cyborg, though, actually, because oh, I sleep, we, we, we joke stuff. around about um, Rob potentially being a mutant, maybe a cyborg um, because of his ability to drink uh, large amounts of alcohol and not get intoxicated, yes. not be hung over. And also sleep maybe fucking four or five couple hours, hours a day, you know, yeah. and uh, still function. Yeah, um, I don't know how something's So you might head. actually be the cyborg. Do you got a fucking microchip in your wrist? No, but I woke up with this cut here. It hurts. Yeah, that, that, that. When, you, <laughs> when you were when you were sleeping for when you were taking your nap last night, yeah. maybe uh, someone came to visit you and fucking yeah, slid one, one in. One of them like did you see that video on YouTube of the alien? They, they everybody was like stopping over New Jersey and it was really actually like a good year fucking blimp. No, I is that just yeah, happened? People are fucking dumb. I mean I believe in aliens and UFOs, but those people yeah. are dumb. Well, the thing is you gotta, you a gotta. Lot of people. Are dumb. <laughs> well, we know that, right? That's just the way it is. That's humanity. My thing with the UFOs is number one, anything that you see that you don't recognize can be called a UFO, right? So yeah, plus with the drones and shit. The drones, exactly. Different. And then you gotta understand, like, there's all kinds of military technology out there that we don't know what the fuck. Like, if you saw one of those, what do they call them? The the black um, the 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 planes they got. They're they're like fucking. Uh, Triangles, black. I don't know if it's black, not Black Hawk. Those are the helicopters. It's something else, though. And it's, the, oh, the the under the radar. Um, yeah, it's like stealth. They're yeah, like stealth. The stealth fighters. You mean to tell me, right? If you saw one of those, we, we, we wouldn't see it. Stealth. Well, no, but there's the black. I don't know, dude. You fly at night. Any one of those. Any one of those kind of aircrafts. If you saw those, one are of just those, no radar. If you saw anything like that in the sky, right? You, you mean to tell me you wouldn't be like, what the fuck is that? And no, I would have known you're from gonna school. Say, and I would have been like, yeah, that's a stealth fighter. All right. Well, well, you're a fucking bomber. special. You're, you, you, you <laughs> well, have we, have a, the air, we have the air <laughs> show in Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, but seriously, like, this, I'm sure they have all kinds of, of uh, aircrafts and things like that that if you saw, you would not recognize. So I think I, you can attribute some of the sightings to that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say all of them. I mean, again... I'm not saying that there are not extraterrestrial crafts and beings. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. I, oh, there I, definitely are. Well, I, I think it's definitely I, a possibility. those places. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's definitely a possibility. I will say that. I, I'm not 100% sold, but I'm not 100% sold on a lot of things. You already hear the story about the Keebler Elf people. They're definitely... The Keebler <laughs> Elves are real, actually. I just saw one on my way here. But... Um, I, I do think it's a strong possibility that there are extraterrestrials and uh, obviously extraterrestrial crafts, which are responsible for some of the UFO sightings. And I think some of them could possibly be military crafts or who the fuck uh, knows. Most of them probably. I mean, I don't think that they want like if the technology is that crazy. If they wanted to see you, they let you. See, you know, you would. There would be no like without a doubt. You know what I mean? What, as far as aliens? Yeah, like... Well, we like, don't know. Well, we know. We don't. Yeah, we I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. You're I right. mean, I think so many people have claimed 
ET sightings. That I mean, there, that there's been, something I've, to it. I've hung out with aliens, but it was always like psychedelic, <laughs> like illegal fucking... aliens. <laughs> I <don't... laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yes, both actually. No, but yeah, well, you've, you're saying in a psychedelic experience, yeah. so that, that's a whole other you know rabbit hole. Because... Yeah, but maybe, yeah, but maybe not. That might be. I mean, that that might, might have that been might be the how you actual, contact them. That might be. Yeah, that yeah. might be the. I mean, the psilocybin spores is the only. Thing well, they say the I've heard space. that DMT is possibly the gateway to the next dimension, and that could be no, the DM, way DMT is weird because it's. I don't can't quote me on exact timing, but the time that it is introduced into your body is when, like, like after conception, like right when you can find like the sex of the baby or something like that. Yep. It's like introduced like in a heavy load. And then the moment you die right. is when it's released. Well, it's in our brains. It's in our penal, yeah. penal um, glands, right? Penile, penile, penal. Penal. Yeah. And, they, and you can't, and it's hard. And then the penile gland represents the third eye. And then that's right, another the rabbit trail. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, it's very interesting. Well, I know someone that said, so I know someone that said, um, they, they know people that have meditated to the point where they can reach that same state. Oh, yeah. That you reach when you when you take the DMT through whatever it means, or like lucid dreaming, right? Well, yeah. sleep paralysis. I've I had mean, sleep that's, paralysis. that's stuff that people experience daily. I've had I do well, I, normally. Right? I used to get sleep paralysis pretty fucking frequently, dude. And I was like, I'd wake up like, what the fuck was that? You know? Yeah, I get I get I get lucid. Yeah, I've had I get lucid. lucid well. I get lucid dreams a lot. Like I can remember, and I go back to my same dreams too. It could be like a year yep. later, months, year, months yep, later. I do that same too. scenario. I still know my way around. Like the shit's still in the same spot. Yeah, and it's like a mimic of your, of like stuff that like is like similar to you, but like, and that's a whole other crazy thing that I wish I, I want to learn more. What about. do you like, think dreaming, dreaming? Because that's you, weird. As it happens, like free, and like I've noticed it more that I've I don't smoke as much cannabis as I used to. Like no I way. used to smoke a lot. No way. Yeah, you? definitely. Um, I mean, smoking this little. <laughs> I remember taking bong days, rips dude. out of your bong <clears throat> and fucking literally not being able to move off the fucking couch for like two hours. Yeah, that yeah. happens. Yeah, it does. Um, but yeah, and I, I, you know, I've been in different situations. Well, like psychedelics that you think differently. But as far as the cannabis thing, I read a study before that. Um, when you smoke, I don't dream because I remember I used to sleep and just yeah, sleep right, and not right. dream at all. And then now I st- I decreased as much. I used to. I've been smoking since so I was like fucking. Why fucking do you think that is? What, what you don't uh, dream as much when, when I don't know. But now, but now being I mean it's not even think being older. I just stopped smoking as much. I mean it was going from like an ounce or two a week smoking to now I smoke like fucking I don't even know like an eighth a week. You know what I mean? It's like nothing. So I think that make some of your receptors in your brain or not or i'm not really sure exactly i mean i'm sure you could google it and i could look it up bring that up jamie (laughs) yeah hey jamie yeah (laughs) do you think that has to do with brain chemistry as well because uh, everyone has different experiences on psychedelics in in yeah i do and i mean ever i mean as far as psychedelics in my experience yeah why don't your whole it's your whole like why don't you give give people because you you've done a fair amount of psychedelics. Why, why don't you give them just a little uh, window into the psychedelic experience? It's hard to explain psychedelics to somebody. You've that told has me never some. You've told me some them. stuff before. I don't. Well, I mean, yeah, like like certain like the like the visual effects, like being able to like I could like I remember looking through like my hands and my feet and like I've being heard able that to see, several people, yeah, you know, see the bones and like see things unravel, and you're still being conscious enough to know that you're tripping you know but it depends on your smang state i've also had bad experiences when um i didn't even trip i watched like an hour two two hour movie and then yep. it was still awake for like by the time I, you know it was like two and a half hours and then i went to sleep and then it was just like i couldn't sleep and my mind's racing but i wasn't tripping it was just like i just didn't want to I just, it was like overload anxiety but those are like spores that were growing well, what was the craziest experience you've had on on psychedelics the craziest experiments 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 experiences uh experience <laughs> well i mean i mean i changed i, I changed the, my religion because of it i mean I, yeah I, you what, did tell that me that was, um yeah it was probably like Seven grams or something of shrooms, uh, maybe like five grams of shrooms, but from like real shrooms, not like this fucking bathtub shit. <laughs> fish bathtub. Tank. Not not bathtub fish. <laughs> That's, I was thinking of hooch. I thought about prison for a minute. Angel dust. Yeah, no, I never done angel dust. Well, I remember you told me something too. Where it was a it was a uh, 
just total breakdown of your ego. Yeah, ego and, death. And yeah, and I remember being conscious, but being in this place, which, and to my memory, looked pretty much like I was in the sky. I couldn't see the earth. It was everything was black around me, three hundred and sixty degrees, and there were and just stars. There was just I was like in the galaxy, fucking somewhere. <laughs> but knowing that I was actually really in my room. And I remember feeling like and consciously saying, oh, my God, if I I understand why I don't have a fear of death anymore, because I know I have a family that loves me. I know I have a good support system. I know I have great friends. And knowing that consciously that I would leave all that behind to stay in this place forever. I don't care about I would rather be there. Yeah, because it was no, it was no ego. Right. You know, um, pure consciousness. Yeah. And it's fucking wild and you can't experience that unless you go to that neck you know you can't be taking a, a stem and two caps and yeah, fucking yeah. think you're gonna fuck i remember you told me something else too where you looked in the mirror and something happened yeah i looked in the mirror like you looked at, you're not well first of all anybody that is thinking about taking psychedelics you're not supposed to look at yourself in the mirror that's like a rule <laughs> that's a disclaimer yeah, right there <laughs> like i mean jesus christ yeah and you shouldn't have any fire around like no lighters like no nothing you, I dangerous smoke, I, used to, I was smoking dabs and like people would, like grab the torch and be like bah, bah. I'm like no you can't don't you can't uh you shouldn't be playing with fire because you don't you know your perception's a little off but i've been in great great places i've only have one i've only had one bad trip i mean L- 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 with mushrooms lsd i've never had a bad trip yeah i was gonna ask you what LSD do you prefer is more what do you prefer lsd or- i like the organicness of mushrooms, mushrooms but i've never had a bad trip off LSD. So it's like, are you rolling a fucking dice? You know what I mean? Now, do you consider psychedelics to be a drug or narcotic? Mm, no. There's I, always been I, debate about that. I only, I will take psychedelics and I will use them as a tool. Right. Um, but then again, I'm not a hippie in the woods popping fucking all sort of quaaludes and fucking everything and masculine and fucking. And I'm not nothing I mean, against, nothing quaaludes against quaaludes that. Huh? I don't think quaaludes are even. Nah, somebody got a jar of them somewhere. <laughs> Take another Quaalude. But you know what I mean? I just, I'm just using that as, like, reference. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm like, maybe, like, at festivals, people would abuse it and doing it to get fucked up and see crazy shit. Like, if I do it, it's for a therapeutic reason. It's well, to, I like, think, reset myself. I think that's why a lot of these things were uh, and the time, discovered and, the, and developed. And the time that I, that I didn't use it as a tool and used it just to take them, that's when I didn't have a good experience. Now, wh- why do you think it is that some people trip and, and they, as they say, they never come back? From it, I mean, there's. I cases haven't been of back. That. I haven't been back from it. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, to the point of in, being incoherent, like fucking. I, I remember there was a dude oh, like completely. There was that's a dude. Just a bad batch. Yeah, there was this a. We got a bad batch, dude. There was a dude that used to come into this bar I worked at, and the fucking manager at the time was like, "Yo, that dude right there took so much fucking acid that he's just completely fried." Yeah, I mean, oh, and I know, I've no, I a buddy of mine. I'm not gonna mention his name, but he, um. He a- accidentally took like a fucking hundred strip, dude, like, or something. It was like, or it was either a hundred. I want to say it was a fucking whole strip, dude, like a whole fucking <laughs> god <laughs> damn, yeah. Dude, fuck. And like, yeah, for like two weeks, he was like fucked up for a long time. And he came, and he still gets fucked up. Like he don't really like. I had, I know him for a long time before yeah. he even told me the story. And he gets like, and he's like, and he's still fucked up. He has like, well, people he's have like flashbacks. A little, he's a little, he's he's not weird, but he like. He like won't. He doesn't leave his house really. He's like kind of socially awkward, but he's not. But you have to. You, he can't break down and just like, really like relax completely ever. I don't think he's all. You know. Um, well, it stays in your system too, right? There's that whole thing where you crack your spine or whatever, and you catch a flashback. Yeah, I mean, some people have told me about personal like experiences. With yeah, that. like I mean, that, well, you, what about? Okay, what about? I mean, that might be just something like music. I mean, music and, and everything's frequency. And there's sometimes you might hear a song that could take you back to something where you could smell something. You know what I mean? Well, describe frequency for the people. Oh, man. Mind I blown. mean, well, frequent. No, frequent. <laughs> I mean, frequency is frequent. Everybody, if you know, everyone should know what frequency is. It's just like levels, you know? I mean,. Uh, even I said I mentioned you about listening to med- the only way I could actually go to sleep. Yeah, good. Yeah, is uh, listening to meditation right. music when I go to bed. Yeah, and I think I found YouTube. I think it's five hundred and thirty four hertz or four hundred four hundred five hundred and thirty two hertz or whatever. Yeah. And when you type that, in, it'll just pop up. Med- right, t- meditation five hundred thirty four, whatever it is, um, and that is just a different frequency that your brain perceives different. I guess I don't know the. 
actual total science behind it. Um, but that is the only time where I'll sleep sound throughout the whole night. I won't move. And weighted blankets actually helps help me. Weighted blankets? Yeah, weighted blankets. That that does help. What's a weighted blanket? Weight, I mean, Has the weights blank, in- Yeah, it's like, I don't know, bags of fucking sand or something. I don't know if it's sand, but it's like little pellets. Um, Interesting. 25, 30 pounds. And uh, it's just like a pressure. It just like feels like you're getting held. Like like held down? Yeah, pretty much like... Some people, I don't know, like, that might bother like, some people. Maybe like <laughs> cuddled, is that better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know, for me it works. Some people it doesn't work, some people they feel, like you wouldn't, you'd feel claustrophobic. Yeah. You'd need like a 58 pound fucking bag. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean that, that that's like works for me. If I need music, I need music and sound on when you yeah. sleep, and I've heard that's not good either. Or lights, and I need lights and all yeah, that. You, need stimulation. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I remember, but that's also probably why I only sleep a couple hours. Well, what are you doodling? Yeah, I am actually. I don't know. Why. I, I get into the <laughs> yo. I, I go into these weird zones while I grab a pen, and I'll, if I have a piece of paper in front of me, I'll just start fucking doodling and fucking. That's gonna be our next logo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I make some ill shit though. I'm like, yo. What the fuck, yo? It, like it's fucking out. LSD and like, fucking draw away, dude. I know, right? Fucking Pablo Picasso over here. But um, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Yeah, I, it's it's, it's like a stick figure <laughs> that he drew through a line. <laughs> it's crazy how some people have to sleep with the fucking TV on. I'm the opposite. I need everything dark and fucking thirty below silent. zero. <laughs> thirty below zero. Fucking AC on. Fucking all fucking year round. Um, I, I can't have th- like so. Me and him actually, we we stayed. Um, and, and him and I, yeah, him and I, he, him and me. Um, <laughs> we uh, long story short, we were roommates in Springfield um, in, in a hotel for quite some time. Shout out to the Sheridan, yeah. Uh, Cosmopolitan breakfast. Uh, <laughs> that, was glad. that was a good story. Oh my glad. god! But um, yeah, he definitely like he he ha- he needs all kinds of things going on when he's when he's sleeping. So um, I didn't get much sleep. For like for like five months, <laughs> you're making up for it now. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's crazy how that works. I guess it has something to do with with when you're born or or uh, be uh, if you're born premature. I, yeah, I was premature, but I think it's a part of it was that because I couldn't. When I came back, I still was at the hospital for like a month. So when I came back, like or when I actually went home for the first time, my mother used to have it was noisy in like the ICU because I was there for a month. So yep. like all the machines and people in and out and nurses and this and that. So a baby's crying and whatever the fuck. So I, I guess I needed a radio under my bed, and she put one under there, and then I went to sleep, and I need it. Now I need noise. If I don't have no, noise, I, I'll just think and just sit there. Your mind like a just fucking goes. psychopath. Yeah, so I, I'd rather just, I'd rather just, I so, mean, medit- meditation is the best. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I try I'll, to I'll get a regularly. better, I'll get a better, I'll get a better sound sleep listening to that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm definitely a proponent of meditation. I uh, try to meditate. Yeah, it's wild. As frequently as possible. Yeah. So Some definitely. people might not think that looking at me, but I've um, definitely been into that stuff. Oh. Um, well, people might see me and say, this fucking goon's not fucking meditating, you know what I'm saying? Or into fucking spirituality or Eastern philosophy, but uh, it's all good stuff. It's all real. It's all relative. Nah. It's more relative than, than you know, a lot of these other religions and... Um, I wouldn't even call. We're it not religion. talking about religion on this podcast. No, I'm, I'm trying to. All right, I'm not going to go down that one, that hole, but um, that rabbit hole. We don't talk about religion. Hole. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, no, definitely, man. I'm not hating on nobody. I'm just saying for me personally. Um, I, I, I do think everybody, everybody is the same, and I mean, we are all equal, even bugs, in my honest opinion, and pets, and pe- I mean, what's the difference between people? Like you see these people worship. They don't have children, but they worship their animals way more that's true than their own their children and then and, and like, people and then but though but you but you, what's the difference between that and you stepping on a spider you well, know what i mean that's how i look at it yeah. everything's the same maybe right. relocate it if it makes you uncomfortable but um I mean, you know i don't know and people are also blood suckers just like uh, many insects and uh, other creatures so this is true <laughs> actually probably more so and intentionally yeah like so that was uh, that was an interesting uh, psychedelic rabbit hole that we just went down. Yeah, but I think I think a lot of people are into that. So it's yeah, it's all, no, it's it is what it is. There's no, I mean, it, and there's there's no way that you can I could describe it to anybody. Yeah, honestly, like the visuals of it, you can't like the ego death is a feeling. Um, so buy the ticket, take the ride. Hunter S. Thompson, the great, um, one of <clears throat> definitely an inspiration for. Uh, 
The both yeah, of us. Just watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas <laughs> or Rango if you want something a little more tame. You can watch Rango. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's a uh, uh, off play um, that Johnny Depp did, but it's a cartoon of right. a lizard. But it gives you that psychedelic that feeling vibe, without. Yeah. You, if you really want to get fucked up, watch it and take a psychedelic. <laughs> you did you do that? Absolutely. And how was that? Amazing. Lord. Well, there you go. So if you guys need something to do, get some psychedelics, get the the movie, and <laughs> yeah. uh, put it on and yeah, trip the no, fuck that's out. That's good. That's good. But, but uh, I mean, you can. It's a kids' movie, but you. I mean, it. It's there. Yeah. Well, there's definitely adult. Um, Johnny Depp. But he's crazy. So. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm sure he's done his fair share of psychedelics, and he, he was all- absinthe and like jerks <laughs> off on wine bottles. Or something. He was also close to Hunter S. Thompson too. Um, he only lived with him because yeah. he acted. He Method played actor, him. Right. He played him in uh, Fair and Loathing in Las right. Vegas, and he actually lived on HST's um, uh, Woody Creek uh, Owl Farm in Woody yeah. Creek, uh, yeah. Colorado. I definitely I would like to go over there. Uh, I got some 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 friends in Denver, so yeah, next time crazy. I go out he there. Was aw- I mean, what do you call himself? 61, no more fun. That was a suicide note. Uh, yeah, he was in the 60s. No more fun for anyone. No more games, no more sports. Football's over. Well, he Relax, had... Relax, old man, this won't hurt. He had like, like an apocalyptic outlook on the way things were going in society, and some of it's definitely relevant. And they also say, too, when uh, um, if you notice there's a pattern with writers, they get to a point where they lose the inspiration to write or they you know, feel... You he, he invited his whole family to the ranch. He had, like... His a, son, I think, a, was there and his wife. And, at the end, I think his grandkids, I believe. I don't know. I think so. I don't know, but... so the, Bring uh, that up, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. Where's Jamie? <laughs> um, oh, someone's calling uh, me right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I told um, you. I, you know I did ask you if you shut I that did, off, I right? did, I did, actually. But, um, you did shut it off? Yeah, I don't know what's well, going on. Didn't. But, um, no, there's a thing with... A lot of writers is a pattern where where when they get to that point they just kill themselves. It's, no, I think that it was because he was getting up every night to take a piss and he just lived in the middle of bumfuck Colorado and he was like, nah, but he wanted to live there though. That's where he that's, yeah, and peace away from everybody. He ran from the sheriff. Wait, but that's not why he killed himself. I think he just was like over it. Well, I think he. Well, I think he lost his inspiration to write. And he, he didn't feel like he he felt like the world was in a bad place, and he's like, I don't want to be around for this anymore. He's I want to go out on my own terms. He had always talked about that too. Yeah. Actually, there's a quote of him saying like um, something about that along those lines, where he wants to go out on his own terms in his own way. Yeah, and- not 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 dying in some fucking broken down. Assisted living facility, right? Or whatever. Exactly. You get. I'm eating fucking yogurt every day yeah. and Jello. But it would be interesting to see what his view would be. Is that he was one? Alive that right would be now. one person on my. Well, you could do it. That would be my one person. I wish I could hang out with one yeah. time. I would. Oh, absolutely. I, I would think. Absolutely, that would be amazing. That would be one. Definitely one of the most interesting people. That's of our that's time. not 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 of the living. It would definitely be Hunter S. Thompson. I'm not sure. See, this is why those card things would be good. To, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Um, who else? Anybody, anyone oh, else? Fucking Jesus! Don't get me started. <laughs> I'd rather hang out with the monkey that found mushrooms. <laughs> the monkey that found mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. He, I mean, him for sure. I don't really can't. I don't know who else. Fucking dead. I mean, people. Well, there's that, a lot I, of dead people. That, I know. That, I mean, like, oh, my grandfather. Like, yeah, I'm, like my grandmother, Meme. Like, I would, like, you know, yeah, people like that. But like for historic people, yeah, they would be Hunter S. Thompson just because he looked at things different. Maybe Terrence McKenna. Okay. Yep. Um, Terrence McKenna. That's a whole other goddamn. Uh, rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, right. Well, kind of in the same vein as far as the psychedelics yeah. go. I don't. I think I don't know. We'll have to go back to this next month. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah think that, about it. For Terrence McKenna and Hunter S. Thompson, absolutely, because there's two different sides of the spectrum, but both they deal with psychedelics. Everybody else that I would like to ask questions and pick their brain, they're probably alive. But it maybe maybe like a musician or something. But. Yeah, there's a lot of musicians I would like to hang out with. Um, definitely from past generations. Um, some of the old blues artists and stuff like that, I think would be fucking amazing. Dude, um, maybe Johnny, Johnny like Cash, Hendrix, Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash. I wouldn't mind hanging yeah. out with. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, and being like, yo, what the? F-? But even maybe not even maybe not even like maybe like it would maybe not. Well, here's the maybe it would be like I would rather hang out with like a Carlo Gambino or like a Lucky <laughs> that, Luciano. That it would also have to, be. I, I was actually, actually thinking that. I would rather do I one of those guys, that. and then I would rather. I mean, why don't maybe, we just hang out with them all? I mean. All three, well, I know. All whoever. Yeah. But I think Hunter S. Thompson would be definitely good. I think 
um, I think, Terrence McKenna. I think picking Meyer Lansky. Lansky's brain would be interesting. I think, well, Meyer, yeah, Meyer Lansky, <laughs> definitely. I mean, <laughs> Fucking mastermind. The money man. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, yeah, look, yeah, I think I think Carlo Gambino, if I had to pick out of all of them, just because of how long his reign was. Right. And he was... Mastermind. At the end of the day... Um, I mean, he didn't run just illegal rackets. He ran the whole fucking shore, dude. Everything. You know what I mean? So, like, you can't... I mean, you definitely... And for somebody not from this fucking country, you know, I mean, I, I think that would be that would be my... My top, mine would be my top three, I think. That's a good top three. It's solid. Uh, you definitely learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Um, I think hanging out with Hunter S. Thompson and then go hanging out with Carlo Gambino, definitely two uh, <laughs> opposite ends of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, I would learn some shit. Yeah, that'd, that'd be sick, man. That'd be, uh, you know. Imagine having them on the podcast. Yeah. This guy be wouldn't even know what the, what the fuck this guy doing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you take enough uh, acid, you can make that happen. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if Carl, I don't think Carl Gambino did acid. <laughs> All right. So um, anything else on the agenda? Uh, what, coming up? Uh, well, yeah. We do have shit coming up. God we do. We, we do. Have, we're actually got a lot of, a lot of guests coming on um we haven't released slip repeat peter barrett um, yeah he'll be on my boy the homie he'll be on in two weeks great um, fighter tough motherfucker man. i have miss annie lane she's an adult shout out to uh, annie lane adult performer um and we'll break into that when uh when we talk to her the very sexy when you guys and beautiful hear, annie yes. lane um i'm gonna be excited for that one you are yeah you're already excited <laughs> uh so yeah then we got annie and then we have your buddy's the author that uh, he oh did Dave Whitey Wedge yeah, yes shout out to Dave, Dave Wedge. Wedge he wrote a book That's on uh, about Whitey Bulger about the capture and killing of Whitey Bulger actually, yeah he uh, wrote a bunch of big yeah, time yeah, journalist music he's journalist uh, he's done a lot We're, so stay tuned for all that and stay tuned for we even got more in the works that we don't know oh yeah we to. got more but then after that episode that's then we're going to do another recap on yep. those three yep so our our schedule is pretty much doing an episode or releasing an episode a week absolutely and, um four episodes a month our last being a recap and just talking shit and recapping on what's going on um and that's pretty much it so thank yep. you guys for your support it's been awesome share all of our shit follow us instagram any goddamn outlet streetcornersoapbox.com we're on it uh all the social medias we're on except for twitter and well, fuck we, twitter yeah twitter's kind of useless unless you're famous and uh well snapchat i don't know you should probably make a uh street corner soapbox snapchat because you so love I can you, take pictures of you you love snapchat so you might as well uh, yeah, I don't fucking know. I could, I guess, but um, yeah. So streetcornersoapbox dot com. I um, am gonna put out our episode every week on that, and you can just click on the link in the main browser, and um, it'll bring you right to SoundCloud. You can listen to anything, but Apple Music, um, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube, everything. It's all on platforms, it. all digital platforms. Share our stuff, and if, like I said before, if any of you guys. Um, know somebody that wants to come on or you think that would be an interesting person of character let me know and i will reach 100. out to them streetcornersoapbox.com i'm signing off rob Faust with my brother lord willing lord willing peace